So there's an important update in the Bianchi Maryland assault weapon ban case that is currently up for Supreme Court review. The same case was just argued in front of the Fourth Circuit en banc panel, and those arguments were completely insane. So let's talk about what just happened and how this is probably gonna push the Supreme Court to finally review this rifle ban issue. Now, before we jump into this video, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is Delete Me. Delete Me is a company with a very simple mission. That mission is essentially to help you to control what information of yours is out on the internet. Delete Me does this by targeting large data brokers. Data brokers are simply corporations that collect huge amounts of your personal information. This includes information like social security numbers, birthdays, past and recent addresses, information about your relatives, and a lot of other information that you might not want out there. I personally use Delete Me to get rid of some of my personal information that was floating around on the internet. And this is very important to me because although I am, you know, obviously a forward facing figure here in the 2A community, I still want some sort of privacy and I don't want my information out there and my family's information out there and Delete Me help me to get rid of that information. So if you want to take control of your own personal information, I highly recommend that you check out Delete Me. You can find them using the link down below. And if you sign up using the code SCHOLAR, you can get 20% off of that membership. So thank you again to Delete Me for sponsoring this video and check them out if you want to take control of your private information. As I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be talking about a critical rifle ban case that is currently up for Supreme Court review. And at the same time, there is arguments going on in front of the Fourth Circuit en banc panel. You may recall that SEF recently filed for a writ assert before judgment, and that went to the United States Supreme Court. And this involves the state of Maryland's ban on so-called assault weapons. And this is the Bianchi v. Brown case. Now, currently, while that petition is sitting in front of the Supreme Court, the Fourth Circuit en banc panel just held oral arguments in the Bianchi case and the hearing probably went just about as well as you would expect. The anti-gun judges took a ton of time to actively kind of resist what the Supreme Court's analysis was in Bruin, and they also just harped on how dangerous these AR-15s are and how dangerous these rifles are. So we're gonna break down what happened during these arguments, and then we need to also talk about, because of these arguments and how this was approached by the Fourth Circuit, how this is likely going to force the Supreme Court to finally step in and grant review to the Bianchi petition that is currently in front of them. Now, if you're not aware, this Bianchi case was a new challenge to the Maryland ban on so-called assault weapons. Bianchi attempted to reopen the door to challenge a prior decision by the Fourth Circuit in a case called Colby. In the Colby case, a district court upheld the Maryland ban using intermediate scrutiny. And on appeal of that decision, a divided panel in the Fourth Circuit concluded that these rifles are in fact protected by the Second Amendment and that the ban substantially burdened the right to self-defense within the home. Well, the state of Maryland didn't like that the three-judge panel in the Fourth Circuit ruled against them, so they sought a rehearing en banc in the Fourth Circuit. And on review, the en banc panel in the Fourth Circuit upheld the state of Maryland's ban, finding that these rifles are outside the protection of the Second Amendment because the Fourth Circuit en banc panel said that they are useful in military service. And since they are useful in military service, the state like Maryland could place restrictions on their possession and use. This case, Bianchi conceded that Colby was the controlling precedent, but that the Fourth Circuit simply got that analysis wrong and it should be reversed. The district court and the three judge panel reviewing the Bianchi case both agreed that this case had to be dismissed because of that prior Colby precedent. And after those two denials and those dismissals, the case was then sent to the Supreme Court on a writ of cert, and that was back in 2022. Now, after issuing the Bruin decision, the Supreme Court granted, vacated, and remanded the Bianchi case back down to the Fourth Circuit for reconsideration and reevaluation in light of Bruin. The Bianchi case was then argued in front of a three judge panel, and that happened back in December of 2022. But then, like I mentioned, the case sat dormant for over 13 months. Then suddenly we received an order from the Fourth Circuit en banc panel that they were taking review of the case out of the hands of the lower court and they were going to review it on their own. Now, instead of waiting for the Fourth Circuit en banc panel to review and just absolutely botch this case and this decision, the plaintiffs, SAF, decided to submit a writ of cert before judgment to the United States Supreme Court. Now, like I mentioned, although that petition is currently pending in front of the Supreme Court, oral arguments were just held in the Fourth Circuit en banc panel in this Bianchi case. And once again, the judges on the Fourth Circuit showed that they do not believe in the Second Amendment at all, and they will not faithfully apply what the Supreme Court just said in Heller and Bruin. Now, these arguments really were kind of hard to listen to because it was just a bunch of anti-gun nonsense. It was a bunch of just either not understanding what Bruin said at all or just completely ignoring it to pretty much meet the judge's anti-gun agenda. 
You know, there were some judges on the panel who talked about, you know, how they were on the Army Reserves and they shot some things like, you know, M16s. And when they shot M16s, it completely just exploded the targets and explodes people. And the AR-15 is just automatically the same. It's the same type of rifle and therefore they should be banned because they're just so dangerous, which again is laughable. Also very interesting during the arguments, there were some of the judges on the panel who said that the Colby and the military use test was not addressed at all in Bruin. It was not struck down by Bruin. Simply Bruin just struck down the tier-based scrutiny and intermediate scrutiny, which was a secondary issue in Colby. And so they are still arguing or trying to put forward the position that the military use test used in Colby, used in the fourth circuit, recently used in the seventh circuit, still stands as proper. And again, they're saying this type of military use test, which has been rejected by the Supreme Court, is in some way still valid. Then there were some judges on the panel who said that this type of facial challenge or a challenge to the statute at large in Maryland was improper and instead they need to bring as applied challenges and that would mean that they would need to challenge each and every type of rifle that is currently banned in Maryland, try to challenge it you know, based on the plaintiff as applied to them and that specific type of rifle. And that's all again, very interesting and absurd because they're saying that you just can't bring these types of facial challenges to a clearly unconstitutional piece of legislation. Then there were some judges who talked about remanding this case back down to the lower court, you know, for more evidence to be developed on whether or not these types of AR-15s or other types of rifles are in common use for lawful purposes, like self-defense and other types of uses. They said that the lower court is better suited to develop the evidence, which again is very interesting because this, you know, happens a lot right now in lower courts. A lot of these lower courts talk about, well, we need to develop the record. We need more evidence. We need experts. But when you look at the analysis in Heller, in Bruin, what the Supreme Court did there is they didn't go back and try to develop a robust, you know, evidentiary record. They didn't, you know, try to do that. They just looked very clearly based on the statute, looked at the Second Amendment, looked at the items being banned, and they were able to come to a determination. And then there was a lot of frustrating discussion about, you know, how the Second Amendment changes over time because of technology. And that was interesting because it seemed like a lot of the judges on the Fourth Circuit are just ignoring what Thomas said in the Bruin decision. Bruin addressed expressly the developments in technology, you know, how the First Amendment isn't fixed, how it changes over time because of technology. Now, that doesn't mean that the First Amendment can meet whatever you want. You still have to look at the historical basis of the First Amendment and use that as your grounding. But just because, you know, things like the press or the internet developed over time, that doesn't mean that you can then place whatever restrictions you want on them just because there's a technology change. And in the same way, you cannot make that similar type of argument when it comes to the Second Amendment and firearms. So again, like I mentioned, the arguments were very frustrating to listen to. If you want to listen to them, you can simply look up the YouTube channel for the Fourth Circuit. It's the Bianchi v. Brown case, and you can listen to the entire argument for yourself. It's frustrating to listen to. Again, the Fourth Circuit, you know, very clearly identified once again that they're anti-gun, that they do not either agree with Bruin or they don't understand Bruin or they just do not want to adhere to it at all. Now, why is this important? Why is what the Fourth Circuit just did during these arguments very important? They are very clearly identifying once again that they are not pro 2 way and that they are not going to issue a favorable decision but also they're being very adamant on their refusal to faithfully apply Heller and Bruin. And many times during this discussion, a lot of those judges were kind of taking shots at the Supreme Court, taking shots at the Bruin analysis and showing that they are not going to adhere to it. And because of that, I think the Fourth Circuit might've just burned any leeway that the Supreme Court might've given them in this specific case. The Fourth Circuit made it very clear during those arguments and during that hearing that either they don't understand Bruin's methodology at all or they simply will not follow what the Supreme Court said. Now, with the Bianchi case currently pending for a writ of cert before judgment, this very case in front of the Supreme Court on a petition, SAF can now very easily go back to the Supreme Court in their briefs and point out to the four circuits recent hearing of the Bianchi case, pull the transcript, pull some of the language that happened during this hearing and say, look, Supreme Court, the four circuit en banc panel is not going to follow what you said in Bruin. There is either a ton of confusion in the lower courts about Bruin still, or they are just not going to faithfully apply it. And all that results in you needing to step in immediately. In some ways, I think the Fourth Circuit kind of overplayed their hand. I think if the hearing was a little bit more neutral in tone and some of the judges even acted like they were going to apply Bruin in some way, even if it was in a skewed way like the anti-gun side likes to do, I think the Supreme Court would have kind of stepped back, said that they were going to wait for the Fourth Circuit decision. But instead, they had a lot of rhetoric, a lot of arguing and bickering back and forth about 
you know, what the Second Amendment's application is, challenging what the Supreme Court said in Bruin, claiming that they had some sort of confusion about Bruin. I think that all is going to lead the Supreme Court stepping in early. So again, very interesting arguments. I would recommend you guys listen to them if you have a little bit of time. Just be warned, they're going to frustrate you. So that's what's happening in the Bianchi case. That's what's happening with these rifle bans and a challenge to get rid of them nationwide. If I get any more information, if anything else develops, I will let you guys know. Also, if you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of toy news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.